Hey everybody, it's Frank here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a dedicated home file server using Ubuntu Linux and Samba. This server will allow the whole family to store and share files and access them from Windows, Mac, or Linux computers. This is actually a pretty easy thing to do, but information out there on how to do it I found mostly to be either outdated and no longer valid, incomplete and confusing, or simply wrong. So I'm going to show you start to finish how to set up the server as well as how to access files from it. Did I mention the software is all free and it'll run on that outdated old computer you have lying around? So let's get to it. Here's the scenario. I want to set up a dedicated file server in my home that everyone in the family can connect to and store their files on. With that said, the server must meet the following three requirements. One, I want to use a really old computer I have laying around for the server, meaning I don't want to spend any money on it at all other than a new hard drive for reliability. Two, I want it to be a set it and forget it system that once configured will just sit and run for years and keep itself updated with no maintenance from me at all. And three, I want users to be able to access files from Linux, Mac, or Windows computers easily. For my situation, I want to have four shared folders. One will be named My Stuff and will be only accessible by me. One will be named Wife Stuff and will be only accessible by her. One will be named Kid Stuff for Junior's use, but files can also be viewed by the wife. And finally, one folder named Everybody, which will be accessible by all three of us and can be used for such things as videos, pictures, music, and whatever. In this folder, I'll create subfolders for videos and music. Sound like fun? Good. But before I can Samba, I need to cobble together some old computer parts and get the server software installed. So now I've got a computer put together with some old hardware that should work just fine. You don't need anything with a lot of speed for this, but it will need to have a 64-bit capable processor. I recommend you purchase a new hard drive for your system for reliability. This should be done whenever you build a new system. Based on the stated requirements, my server will be Linux-based. In this case, it'll be a minimal install that will run very easily on my old system with only 512 meg of RAM. In my case, I've downloaded Ubuntu Server version 14.04 LTS, which you can get free from www.ubuntu.com forward slash download forward slash server. This is a long-term support version that will continue to get security updates and be supported until the year 2019. I recommend you stay away from using newer intermediate releases and only use long-term support versions. Barring hardware failure, this thing should just sit and do its job for years without any assistance. Note, in order for me to capture video on the server install and setup, I'll be configuring it on a virtual machine. The steps I'll be showing are identical to what I'll do on the physical machine, so let's get to it. I've already burned the ISO file to a disk and I'm ready to install it. I just put it in the drive and start the system up. During install, it'll connect to the network using DHCP. At the next screen, when it asks for a host name, hit Tab and select Go Back. On that screen, select Configure the Network Manually. The reason is that we want to have the server to have a statically assigned IP address that will always be reachable instead of one assigned by DHCP. In my case, I'm going to give it a host address of 192.168.0.100 followed by slash 24, which represents the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. Tab over to continue and hit enter. If you don't know your network address, go to a working computer and check the network settings it's using. You'll be using the same first three numbers in the IP address. These will almost always start with 192.168, but the third number may be different. The last number can be anything below 254 as long as it's not being used by something else, such as a network printer. Use a high number such as 250 or the next higher one if that's being used already. Once you pick one, you should also go into your home router setup and exclude this address from being handed out by DHCP. Make sure your gateway address is correct. You can also find this address from a working computer if you don't know it. In my case, I need to change it from 1 to 5. The name server address should be the same as your gateway address. Enter the host name, I'll call mine server. Leave the domain name blank. Now you'll create a username and password that you will use to configure the server. 
This should be something that only you will know unless you want somebody else to be able to also configure the server. For my demo, I just put in a wimpy four-letter password, but this should really be at least eight characters long. Don't encrypt the home directory. For the partitioning, select Guided Use Entire Disk. Enter to select a disk to partition. And tab over to Yes to confirm. Just hit Enter for proxy information. And here is where you can set it to automatically install security updates, which is just what I want. Arrow down to Install Updates Automatically and hit Enter for this one. On this screen, arrow down to Samba File Server and hit the space bar to select this option. Tab down to continue and make sure Samba is still selected before you hit enter. This will install everything we need for the server to work. Just hit enter to install Grub. And remove the install DVD and hit enter to restart. After the restart, just log in. You can see here that it has some updates to install. I'll get everything updated now. and restart everything. Keep in mind that this is the only update you'll need to do. Because I selected the install to automatically apply security updates as they're released, it'll keep itself updated from now on. No worries. And log in again. And now we can start configuring the server. Don't worry, this will probably be a lot less typing than you think. The first thing I'm going to do is create Linux accounts for the three users, me, wife, and kid. I'll need to enter my admin password to get into super user mode and enter my new password for the user me I just created. Just hit enter to accept all defaults for additional information and why to accept it all or just hit enter once again. And add the other two users. And now I need to do the same on Samba. This is required and the passwords will need to be the same as you've already entered. To make this go faster, just hit the up arrow after the first one is done and modify it for the next line. Done. Now I'm going to create the directories I'll be sharing. And remember the case matters when you name things. And now I'll assign permissions to the folders. Done. Not all that hard so far, is it? Of course you can modify the folder names and users to suit your needs. Now that users, passwords, folders, and permissions are all done, it's time to modify the config file for Samba to tell it the folders to share and who can access them. To do this, I'll be modifying the existing smb.conf file. You do that by entering sudo vi forward slash etsy forward slash samba forward slash smb.conf Hit insert on the keyboard to get into edit mode. And arrow down to here and verify that the work group shown is what you're using on Windows. By default, Windows will use the name work group, all in caps, and this must match what it's using for network discovery to happen properly. To verify this, go to system 
and you can see the workgroup name here. If you want to change it for some reason, just click on Change Settings and click the Change button and rename it. Since I'm using the default that's already set, there's nothing to do here. If you're using something different, just overwrite this name with a new one. Now scroll all the way to the very bottom of the file and enter the following. Be sure to use the square brackets here. The folder name should change color if it's typed correctly. If it doesn't, arrow back and fix it. For all the lines under this heading, you need to enter a space before typing and remember that case matters in folder name. Once again, if you've typed things incorrectly, the text should change color. This setting determines if the folder can be seen in Network Discovery. For this folder and its subfolders, I'll set it to Yes. For the private folders, I'll set it to No. Next, I'm going to say who can connect to this folder. In this case, it's all of us, so I'll enter all three names. And I'll do the same for both of the subfolders. And now I'll set up the private folders that will not be browsable. And remember that for this folder, the wife also wanted access so that she can add and check homework files, so I'll also give her access as well. And that's all there is to this. Hit escape to get out of insert mode and type in colon, w, and q to save the changes and quit. By the way, if you totally messed up and want to just exit without saving anything, just hit colon, q, and the exclamation mark to quit without saving changes. At this point, one thing I recommend is to test the config file for errors. To do this, you can use the test parameters command like this. And hit enter. Ah, no errors are showing, so all looks good now. At this point, you can simply restart the server and call the job finished, and it should work. I want to show you a quick optional thing you can do to improve security. Let me explain. Right now, any of the users I've created will also be able to log in to the server. If you're concerned about allowing a curious 12-year-old access and only want to allow server access from your own private login, you can modify the Etsy password file to prevent the new users from having direct login access to the server. Not a bad idea. Let me show you what I mean. If I log off, I can now log in with the kid's username and password. Not good. Let me get back in with my private login. To change this, enter sudo vi forward slash etc forward slash passwd and enter your admin password. Hit insert on the keyboard. Arrow down to the bottom few lines, which should start with me, wife, and kid. 
Change the last word on each line from bin slash bash to bin slash false. Make absolutely sure you don't also do this to your private login or you're going to be hosed. Hit escape, colon, W, and Q to write and quit. And now I'll log off. And now you can see they can't log in and do anything. They'll just be kicked out. But I can still get in with my private login. Now I'll restart the server and that's all there is to it. When it restarts, you don't need to log in. Just leave it running. By the way, if you want it to shut down and stay off to move it, for example, just replace the dash R with dash H. I've gone ahead and configured my physical server exactly as I just showed you. Now it's time to test everything and show you how to access files using different operating systems and users. One thing you'll need to do in order to have Windows find the server is make sure network discovery is enabled. If I open File Explorer now with it turned off, and click on Network, I get this message saying that it's turned off. You can click here to change this directly, or go to Control Panel, click on View Network Status and Tasks, and then click on Change Advanced Sharing Settings. Click on the button to turn on Network Discovery and save changes. It'll ask you for admin confirmation, and done. Now if I go back and click on Network again, I can see it's found the server and I can see the everybody folders that were made browsable in the server config. So let's see if I can access the private files on Windows 8. I'm logged in as kid, and I can already see that it's showing the server and everybody folders, but not my folder. I'll copy a file into the everybody folder, and also into the music folder. Easy. To access the kid folder, I'll need to map it. Right click on network and select map network drive, and in here I'll put the server IP address and folder name. Use the backslashes as shown in the example. Make sure the reconnect at sign in box is checked and click finish. And there it is. I'll copy my kid file into it. And it's showing as a network location. Now I'll log out and log in as me. I can see the everybody folder and see the file the kid put in the music folder and open it. I'll go ahead and right click on the network and map my folder. and copy a file to it and log out. And now to test it on a Linux computer. On this Linux machine, I'm logged in with a username and password that's not on the server. I'll show you how you can connect to the server as another user. To do this, I'll open Computer, click on File and Connect to Server. In the Server box, enter 192.168.0.100. Change the type to Windows Share. I'll connect to the Everybody folder. Now if I try to connect, it'll ask me to verify my username and password since the server has no knowledge of my username. Note that it auto-populates workgroup in the domain name field. To connect, I'll change the user to me and enter that password. Tell it to always remember the password. And I'm in. While I'm here, I'll open the Videos folder copy a video into it. Done. By the way, this process is basically the same when connecting using a Mac. Go to Finder, Network, and it should show up in the Network section. Use the Connect As button to connect as a different user if needed. Now, I'll try logging in on another Linux machine as Wife, and I'll connect to the Wife Stuff Share. I'll create a new file.
and edit it while it's on the server. Now if I go to Network, I can already see the Everybody folder. All I have to do is enter my password and tell the computer to remember it. And I'm in. I can see the cat video that I put in there previously. And now I want to see if the wife can also access the kids stuff folder, so I'll connect to that. No need to enter the password again for this. And I'm in. And I can open and modify the file that's already there. Now I'll log out and log in to this machine as kid. Connect to the kid stuff share on this machine. And if I open the file, I can see the changes the wife made. Looks like everything is working just peachy so far. For the final test, I'll see if the wife can access things on her Windows computer. Just go to Network and map the wife stuff share. And she can see the file she edited from the Linux machine. She can also access the videos folder and watch the kitty video I put there in the everybody slash videos folder. And that's it. Wife is happy, so life is good. So that's it for creating a home server using Ubuntu Server from start to finish. I really hope you found this useful. If you did, please give this vid a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. This will help me out. And until next time, cheers.